Integrated circuits have drastically changed the electronics industry and have become an integral part of our society. Is it okay if I use your phone? Okay. They are used in sophisticated electronics and computers, which are part of our everyday lives. Hi, I'm not here now, but leave me a message and I'll get back in touch. Hello, comma. My name is my name. I'm using head movements to move the mouse cursor around and speech to do all kinds of words and commands. These computers are used extensively in research and development to improve the quality of our lives. Voice console, wake up. Press button, period. Go to sleep. The modern electronic era bloomed when thousands of transistors and other electrical components were integrated on a small slice of crystalline material. Today's chips contain millions of transistors and are the heart of the microelectronics, communications, and computer industries. Inside a computer, there are rows of these tiny devices each one capable of storing information or executing hundreds of millions of operations a second. Integrated circuits have evolved from bulky vacuum tubes and transistors and are fabricated in technological centers like Silicon Valley. It all begins with the growth of pure silicon crystals. Silicon is the common element found in sand. It is 28% of the Earth's crust and second only to oxygen in abundance. The silicon from the sand is refined and purified as polysilicon chunks. The purified silicon is then heated to a molten state. A small solid piece of single crystal called a seed is gently lowered into a rotating vat of molten silicon. Using the cubic atomic structure of the seed as a pattern, a new crystal will form as the symmetrical extension of the original seed. The hot liquid silicon in contact with the seed begins to cool and solidify as it is gently pulled from the molten region. The cubic atomic structure of silicon consists of atoms with four electrons in their outermost shell. In a perfect crystal and at low temperatures, each silicon atom bonds with its four neighbors. There are no free electrons to conduct current. At room temperature, however, the silicon crystal has enough thermal energy to free a small number of electrons. These free electrons conduct current as do the holes where the electrons have been. This conductivity can be increased by adding impurities called dopants. Dopants are elements which are similar to silicon in atomic structure. There are two types of dopants. N-type dopants, like arsenic or phosphorus, have one more valence electron than silicon. P-type dopants, like boron, have one less. When some silicon atoms are replaced by arsenic or phosphorus, the crystal is called N-type, due to the extra electrons or negatively charged free carriers. If boron is used, the missing electron behaves very much like a positive carrier. The crystal is called P-type. These free electrons and holes move through the crystal, conducting electrical current in response to applied electrical fields. After 48 hours of growth, a single crystal results from the liquid melt. The ability of silicon to be either a poor or a good conductor 
by fine control of dopant concentration, makes silicon a member of a class of materials known as semiconductors.